when you something rusts, you're bringing in moisture and you're bringing in uh, oxygen, uh, water, and and uh, which forms iron oxide, and it takes up more volume than the original metal because you're introducing the it's Fe3O4 I think is the chemical composition. So that O4 is what's in here plus moisture, and that's why it's bigger. And what that will tend to do is snap the bolts off. Uh, which, so that means we're going to have to replace all of this. And we have purchased and fabricated. We will save the cast iron pieces. They don't seem to be affected. Uh, it's a different metallurgy between iron and steel. And iron is much less susceptible to rust. So this is the body bolster. Four. And in this case, when we take this one out, we'll have a new one all ready to go, except we've got to take off the castings. This is the main frame of the truck, which is just basically a 10 foot by a 79 inch rectangle composed of inch and a quarter by I think it's four, exactly, inch and a quarter by four inch steel. And it's really amazing to me how they, well I don't know how they actually did it at the Laconia Car Company, it's amazing to me that they did it because this is one piece of steel before they learned arc welding, somewhere they had to take this bar and wrap it around itself, one bar or maybe more, and then they welded them together by beating two pieces together. And I don't know where the weld is. It's, it's really very well made. But this is, this is the main frame of the truck that holds everything else together. This one up to AC Electric was sandblasted and primed, and we brought it back, and now we will start this is the basis around which we'll build the whole truck. This is the spring plank. It goes across the truck. In a minute we're going to look at one in place in the other truck. It's supposed to be straight. It's a channel, eight inches. On either end, the springs, the main elliptic springs, press down. And for some reason there was so much strain on it, and this is so badly rusted that it bent. Now they added a piece of one inch thick steel on either side, supposedly to help keep it straight. Well, it didn't work. So we've made new ones, and they're presently being sandblasted and primed. There was a block of wood here, another block on the other side, and then on that, uh, the spring set. This is the uh, some of the siding from the right-hand side of the cab. Um, it has uh, nothing on the back, as you can see, but we've removed number of coats. This is a before. Uh, there's probably half a dozen coats of paint on that and down in the grooves. And the only way we can really do justice to this is to take the thing off and take it apart. Not only to replace the nails, as I said earlier, but because uh, we really want to get down inside and then we'll do the back. This is quite a light wood. I think it's, it's either southern yellow pine or fir. That was not common. Usually they used uh, poplar for the siding, but this is this is a different kind. So we have to scraping it all off. A little bit of the trace of the red that was used in there, uh, but most of the, mostly what we find is green. So I think that's it.